Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. <coughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to everyone. I hope, uh, yeah, I hope you're not uh, looking at us skew. Hopefully the frame is correct. Um, so welcome, hi to everyone out there. Uh, I see there's some people joining in. Um, there'll probably be some more joining in now. So welcome. I'm just trying to switch off some of the devices yeah so let's turn the one off all right good are we on yes uh is the sound okay is the sound okay i hope so all right welcome welcome i saw a few people jumping on when i was setting up the the phone and the recording um so welcome here yeah. welcome to breakthrough city church Welcome to the friends and family from all over uh, in, in Bloemfontein, South Africa, as well as in uh, PE. I saw Freddie over there. Hi, Freddie. Um, I saw Claudia also jumping on there. Hi, Claudia. Good night. Schweizer at Vacuum. All right, revival in Switzerland. Um, greetings there, all the way in Emmental, Switzerland. And uh, I don't know if Daniel's on. And uh, in Winter Tour, but uh, welcome to everyone else there. I saw Ina jumping on, I saw Ronal on, um, I saw Charles up there in Joburg. Welcome there uh, to Barbara and Charles there. Hi, um, I don't know who else is on, but uh, Lady and Lebo, Lebo and Gladys, welcome, and welcome. Dick and Ansi. Hi, Ansi and Dick, welcome, good to see you guys. And uh, <clears throat> we might have a few other people jumping on. So um, I hope we are in frame or in picture because the way I'm looking at the moment, the actual camera looks skewed. So otherwise, I must do this. So <laughs> if it's fine, wonderful. It good. Is it fine? Mm -hmm. All right, good. So uh, um, we're glad that we can actually use this medium just to share. So uh, I want to just uh, jump in. Um, so tonight we call uh, Encounter Night. So uh, I just want to go a little bit further here with what I want to share. Um, there's a bit of a prophetic word that I felt as well uh, earlier this morning. Um, and uh, I trust that there will be a download for you tonight as well. Um, so uh, who else is on there? Is there anyone else we need to know about there? Is, uh, who have we got up in Africa? Is anyone on there? Is Tina on? We're just checking ya. We're just checking ya. So, just uh, once again, I'm just waiting. I know I started exactly actually at 7 o'clock, so I'm just checking who's jumping on now. Alright, so, um, I felt I wanted to just share a bit of a, a, a prophetic word. So, um, some of those will anyway watch afterwards as well. So, uh, um, I really just feel for this time, God wants to open something. So, I actually want to open with a scripture. And then I'll share another scripture. So, uh, a lot of the things that we do is prophetic. And uh, that's very normal for the New Testament church, is that we'll understand what the prophetic is about. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20 speaks about how the prophetic and the apostolic actually lay the foundation, which is Jesus Christ. So, whatever we build on must be on the foundation, which is Jesus Christ. Yeah. And if we build in any other way, Whatever we build uh, in the kingdom will not stand. So it's so important that what we build is with the truth of the word of God and with the spirit of God. So the word and the spirit always work together. Um, I was just sharing with someone as well today is that, you know, when we get revelation and we experience certain things um, that God might reveal to us, uh, a lot of you in that um, saw and heard the testimony, part of my testimony on Sunday that was passed about... Um, uh, just me when I gave my life to Jesus as well as some of the encounters I started to have with God and to have encounters with God is normal it is not abnormal it is normal and um, that on the one hand like I said to you sometimes the intimidation comes where people experience you know you know people are going to think you're crazy whatever whatever I was actually chatting to someone else today as well where they said, you know, but there's a lot of things that we're experiencing and they would see, uh, whether it's in the imagination, all right, whether it is um, with a natural eye, whether it is, um, we, you know, we are spirit, soul, and body. 
So there's things that we can capture and see in the spirit as well. Um, God gives us access to seeing that. So um, uh, we'll speak a bit, a bit more about that. But what, what I really believe tonight, and I want to just trust that even when we start tonight, that something's going to be activated in the spirit. Yes, amen. Do you know that um, even when Paul... Uh, Saul became uh, Paul. Saul of Tarsus became Paul. He encounters God on this road, on the road, and falls off his horse, and he, he encounters God, and actually he's blind. And then um, he goes, and he's led away, and he gets led to one of actually uh, disciples of Jesus. And actually, what happens is that the scales of his eyes fall off. So I believe God wants to open something so that we can see something. So there's like, that's part of the New Testament. In the Old Testament, I can even show with you, share with you. And I'm going to share this. And I just felt God wants to open something. You see, the thing is, for a lot of Christians, we are scared of the supernatural. God lives in the place which is supernatural. But the supernatural is natural for God. We live in a realm where um, everything we touch, we see, you know, this is our, you know, this is our realm. So God gives us access into the, to see into the, the spiritual, to, to access the things of heaven. All right. So the Bible speaks about the, the first heaven. This is where we are. There's a second heaven and there's a third heaven. Uh, second heaven is where there's, there's a spiritual realm as well, where there's uh, uh, fallen angels, there's angels. And, you know, we don't really want to interact in that uh, area, but God gives us insight. But then there's also the realm of where we have access to actually where positionally Christ is seated on the throne. Now the Bible says this, and this is the thing is that for a lot of us, we, we, we don't know how to gauge this. And where the Bible says you and I are seated in Christ in heavenly places. So if we are in Christ in heavenly places, seated in Christ in heavenly places, God dwells in you and me because we're the dwelling place of God. We're the dwelling place, we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. We have access, we can actually experience things, what is happening at the throne. Jesus Christ died for us at the cross. He paid for us in full. He paid for our sins, right? But a lot of Christians keep living at the cross. The cross is a place of punishment. The cross is a place where Jesus says, I'm going to deal with something. It is finished. God wants us as Christians to start living not at the cross, but at the throne. And there's a place at the throne in Christ that we can actually access. Now, for a lot of Christians, it's like, you know, um, Christianity is very mo uh, uh, black and white in the sense that, you know, we don't see the fullness in color of what God wants to reveal to us. So, I want to show you, I mentioned to you about even a situation, even with Paul, where his eyes are open. He's able to see. So physically, he was actually also blind. He's able to see, but clarity comes also of heart as well for him. All right. And um, I want to read to you a, a scripture here, even concerning um, uh, in the book of 2 Kings, in two chapter 2, 2 Kings um, chapter uh, 6. I want to read to you. So 2 Kings chapter 6. Um, so just remember, even the book of Revelations, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. Um, the, the disciple, the apostle um, John, he actually gets the revelation. So the Bible says, and he's caught up. He was caught up and he saw this and this and this and this. So you understand it is very normal for Christians to be caught up. There's things that we have access to, to see what God is doing. The Bible says we co-labor with Jesus. We are co-laborers. How is it that God would not want us to have insight into what He's doing if He calls us a co-laborer? He wants us to co-labor with Him. And if we don't have access to what He's doing and what He's showing, how do we know what to do? All right. So I want to show to you in uh, the book of 2 Kings uh, chapter 6. It's, it's a well-known scripture here. And uh, this goes here about Elisha. And uh, basically, there's these Syrian armies that get sent. And uh, um, so what happens, I'll read it from verse, um, from verse 13. Um, let's have a look here. So he said, Go and see where he is, that I may send and get him, 
and it was told him, saying, Surely he is in Do Dothan. Now, the Syrians wanted to find out where this prophet is, and they go to Dothan, and that is where Elisha is. And it says in verse 14, Therefore he said, He sent horses and chariots and a great army there, and they came by night and surrounded the city. And there's a lot of things that might seem night at the moment in South Africa, in the different parts of the world because of coronavirus, whatever, because of the lockdowns, because of decisions made by politicians. And um, there are things that are busy happening that, that, that God wants us to start seeing because there's too many things that the church is busy seeing in the natural. And I believe God wants to encourage the body of Christ, even tonight, even with this message. I really believe it's prophetic. There's really, there's such a distraction what I experience that Christians are going through. And if the church does not have hope and there's hopelessness, what's going to happen to those that don't know Jesus Christ? Even worse. So the church is the light. We, we are a city on a hill and we, we give light. Jesus said, you now are the light of the world. That's you and me. We are the light. So um, where there's light, there's no darkness. And if the light is not shining, there is darkness. So what you and I arise up in and what we believe is going to have a big influence in our, in our workplace, in the communities, wherever we are. All right. So verse 14, I was saying, Therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great army there, and they came by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? It sounds pretty much what's happening in the world at the moment. Well, the politicians don't know what to do, just by the way. They don't know what to do. Because every time you put the news on, they're planning something else. Um, I want to tell you, at this stage, in the different mountains, whether the seven mountains, whether it's education, whether it's the medical, whether it's sciences, whether it's the media, whether it's government, whether it's business, whether it's a religious mountain, the Bible speaks about these mountains that the kingdom of God is going to influence. But do you know that I have never seen the influence presently on earth through the scientific mountain and the political mountain that's busy happening right now. The next thing you're going to start seeing is... The, the economic or the marketplace mountain that's going to be influencing things in the, in the next days that we're going to see. So, but I mean, there's, there's scientists and medicine, there's people making decisions that are actually having an influence across the world. You do realize that. And the politicians are in agreement with that. But just like the servant here, there's this, he's saying, alas, there's this concern, there's this fear busy going out because you see, there's armies that are surrounding everywhere there's literally that's happening to, in a lot of places but there's spiritually there's things also busy happening all right so remember nothing happens just remember this principle nothing happens on earth unless it's first happening in the spiritual realm yeah. okay i don't know that well before even the earth was formed god spoke so when god speaks he creates and he brings forth all right, and tonight I want us just to touch on this as well. That you and I must understand this thing. Um, I want us. I want to share just further. I'll get to part of the prophetic as well that I want to share what I experienced. But what you must understand is that um, seasons, the, the the seasons we have, summer, winter, you know, autumn, spring, they are determined by also weather patterns. All right. So weather patterns are influencing the seasons. In the same way, the words that are spoken and decreed influence what happens here on earth. All right. So that even happened with Daniel. Daniel prayed to the Lord and only later, angel appears, what, 21 days later and says, you know, your prayers, when you first said it, actually were heard in heaven. All right. So these things that were spoken... That brought about change on earth. That's even in the Old Testament. And I believe God wants us to understand something. What we start decreeing and start agreeing with here on earth. Because our prayers, our decrees and what we speak 
become, is in agreement with heaven. Make sure what you're saying, what you're believing, is in agreement with heaven. Because whatever you speak is what you create. And if you speak in negativity and bad doom and gloom, you're actually creating a bad future for yourself. Okay, so the next minute in verse 15 it says, And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant went and said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? Okay, we're hearing it. No one knows actually what to do. What shall we do? Okay, let's hear from this one. Let's hear from that one. Okay, let's do this. Let's try that. Verse 16 says the following. And this is where the church comes in. This is where the body of Christ, this is where the bride comes in. You see, because the church needs to start saying something. Needs to start declaring, start speaking something. Verse 16, it says, So he answered, Do not fear. Do not fear. For those who are with us are more than those who who are with them. And I want to tell you, I don't care what the politicians are saying, I don't care what the governments are saying, in the context that, what God is saying is more important. Yeah. And the report you and I are hearing, needs to resonate with heaven, not with hell. Yeah. And it's not to say, the governments aren't doing great things or whatever. But I want to say, make sure that you are seen and hearing from heaven, because a lot of Christians are in a very reactive mode at the moment and they're reacting to the spirit of fear whether it's through the politicians or the scientists whatever so the next minute he has Elisha and he says do not fear for those who are with us more than those who are with them verse 17 says and Elisha prayed and said Lord I pray open his eyes that he may see all right so even when I'm speaking this, I feel the presence of God in the place here. Even where you are right now that you experience the presence of God. Because I believe God wants to give you the ability to be able to see what heaven is revealing. We're in a critical time to understand the seasons and the times. The sons of Issachar understood the seasons and the times of God. The church needs to know what God is saying. Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain, the mountain's interesting by the way, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. I want to tell you something, this is the Old Testament. And for those who are, are too scared that more, you might be maybe more interested in demonology, in the deliverances, and there's a place for that. But understand one thing. I want to tell you something. We need to start seeing more of the light. We need to start seeing more of the angelic that God sends. Because we know there's only a third fallen angels, and we know there's two thirds of angels that are that are on he in heaven and that are being sent on assignment. So those who are for, are for us are more than those that are against us. And, and I really believe, when, when I, I just felt regarding this tonight, was that I, I believed, even in the Spirit, God wants to open our spiritual eyes. That the eyes of our heart, Paul prays, that the eyes of the, your heart may be enlightened. That they will be opened. That they will be able to see what God is doing. What God is doing. I'm telling you now, we are seeing too many chariots. Of the enemy and the horses and the soldiers of the enemy right now. Whether it's the economic. Whether it's the fear factors. And we're missing out one of the greatest opportunities I believe for the church right now on earth. And that's the good news I want to give to you. We are sitting at a moment right now. Where we're sitting at the tipping point of some of the most amazing opportunities right now. And I'm going to share this with you. You can have a look with me. It's also a very well known part in the Bible in Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. And it says here, we know this piece, uh, what Joshua has to say. In Joshua chapter 1, it says here, it's interesting. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to read these few verses from verse 1 till about verse 10. So just, just listen to what it says here. Just open, open your ears and listen carefully. So after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, 
saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. I believe, this is prophetically what I believe I'm going to share with you tonight, that there's an inheritance that God wants to give the church now. And I believe God is saying it is time to cross over. So whatever that inheritance might be, it might be financial possessions. It might be a financial inheritance. It might be a, a creative skills to generate things in this time. It might be the, the spiritual ability to access greater things in the spirit. It might be encountering God in a new way. It might be uh, relationships with certain family members. It might be people that might come to know Jesus. There's territory that God wants to give the church right now. And if we are going to focus on the chariots and the horses around us, what's happening now, we're going to miss the greatest opportunity. The greatest opportunity. This is the first time in history that pretty much the world has been locked down. And if you realize that. And, and I woke up this morning just for the Lord's speech. I was sensing this thing is that we are sitting with the greatest opportunity in the greatest time that seems of darkness right now. One of the words that I got that came up a year exactly on the 6th of May last year, I posted on Facebook. You can actually go to my Facebook page. And the, the prophetic word that I shared then, today, one year ago, was God is calling the church to live in the place of impossibility. Mm. All right? So remember the thing about the prophetic is that the Bible says God does nothing unless He reveals it to his prophets before the time. All right. So um, the thing is, is God has been revealing to the body about these things he wants to do. So he's already revealed it before the time it happens. Okay. So a year ago, for instance, God says he's calling the church to live in the place of impossibility. That means it is a place which is normal for God. And it's supposed to be normal for you and me. It is a place in Christ that we are seated, that we have access to a thing called impossible which becomes possible it's supposed to be normal and faith is what accesses the impossible all right so now yeah he's uh, uh, um, Joshua and he's he's about to go into the, the promised land now remember the Old Testament church if you want to call that continued in the wilderness for 40 years because there was too much of Egypt still in it the interesting thing is, when they were in the wilderness, for 40 years, they closed and wear out. That sounds quite good. It sounds almost like now, because we're almost wearing, you know. I know all of you are ironing your clothes every day as well. That's a joke. Um, but you know, in the, old in, in the wilderness, yeah, while they were there, what actually happened was, they closed and wear out. Their sandals didn't wear out. They had supernatural provision. They had fire by night, cloud by day, they had um, meat supplied, fresh meat every day, fresh manna supplied every day. They had the supernatural provision. When they crossed over into the promised land, they had to produce their own food. And that is where God breathed on what they sowed. And if you get what, get, understand what I'm saying. I believe there is really a crossing over, even in this time now, in this season. And there's been different facets of this in the past years. But I believe as the church, there's a cross right now because there's an inheritance for the church right now. The Bible says the wealth of the wicked are laid up for the righteous. Okay? Not for our governments, not for those, those, whatever. For the righteous. If it's a righteous government, there will be provision in that. But I want to say that God is wanting us to access inheritance. All right. I'm going to read further on here. So it says here, verse 3, Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. And I want to tell you something. There's things that God says He's given us. Wherever we've put our foot means that wherever we position ourselves and we step on, 
we have access to. Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear what I said? Wherever we step onto, we position ourselves for access. So wherever we go and we take steps of faith now, we can have a supernatural provision. Because God, God will breathe on it because it's an inheritance for, for us. Okay. So yeah, it says here, verse 4. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. There's territory God is giving us now. I believe it. It sounds ridiculous. We can't even move out of our houses. Some of us can't. Some of us can't access certain resources because they aren't there. Some of us are trying to access food. I want to say, there's territory God is saying He's given us. Let me carry on. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Church of God. God says He will not leave us. He will not forsake us. If He never did it with a rebellious bunch that were in the wilderness, and He supplied supernaturally or every single day, and now He says, listen, I'm not... I, you know, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. He's telling you and me today. But he says here in verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. This is interesting. You'll see how many times it's mentioned here. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. I want to tell you there's promises that God has given. This is thousands of years ago. There's promises for you and me today because we're part of that generation yet to be born. We actually live in now as well. This was even prophesied of you and me. For a generation yet to be born. Here we are. Hello. That's you and me. And God is also saying there's territory for you and I to access. It is different areas. It can be resources, financials, properties, investments, um, new creative uh, ideas, new strategies, new planning, new media, new media ideas, new whatever. There's things that God is going to open up for us now. The problem is, are we going to agree with what we put our foot on? Or are we going to agree with the fear in front of us and around us? What do you see right now? Do you see the enemy? Or do you see in the spirit God has opened up something? Verse 7. Here again. Only be strong and very courageous. You know when God purposely repeats something in the Bible, pay attention. That you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you commanded you do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left hand that you may prosper wherever you go I want to tell you there's things that God has given you and me to take hold of now just remember what I said earlier in the wilderness there was the supernatural the fire by night the cloud by day the meat the provision the supernatural stuff yeah they're stepping over into territory that God says, this is a promised land, but there's also giants in the promised land, by the way. How about that? There's giants in this promised land. But the thing is this, are you going to be part of the majority of the ten that run, of the spies that run away? Or are you going to be the two that actually access the promise? Because you're not moved by what the, the media is saying, what the politicians are saying, whatever saying, but you're actually taking hold of the promises of God for you and your life and your family because there's an inheritance. There's an inheritance that God is wanting to give us. And it is what you sow, meaning what? It is what you take with your hands. Let me tell you something. In the New Testament, it speaks about when Jesus is walking and 
he feeds the, the 5,000. And he takes the, the loaves of bread and the fish and he, he blesses it. And then the Bible says this. He puts it in the hands of the disciples. Where did the multiplication take place? In Jesus' hand or in the disciples' hand? It took place in the disciples' hand. Yeah. I want to tell you something. God is putting things in our, in our hands right now. He's putting opportunities in our hands. What are we going to do with it? Because the multiplication takes place in your and my hands. As soon as they stepped into the promised land, they had to sow. They had to reap. But God breathes life onto what they do. Because that is their inheritance. That is their land. Verse 8. This book of the law. Meaning, this is what God has said. You know, does God want to prosper you? Does He want to bless you? Does He want to multiply you? Does He want to give you favor? Yes. Agree with that. That you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For there you will, be, you will make your way prosperous. And then you will have good success. I want to tell you, prophetically I believe God is speaking to the church. That we will react to what heaven is saying and not what we are seeing manifesting here. Alright? A lot what we agree to do and what we say brings the influence here, what we're busy with. Just like the weather patterns influence the seasons and the times, our word and what we agree with heaven influences what happens here. Verse 9, have you commanded, um, have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. There we go, it's the third or fourth time now. Why is he saying that? Because in the promised land, it is something not just what God does. It is something what you and I have to act on and do. Yeah. Yeah. The wilderness, there's the meat, there's the bread, the manna, there's the fire. There's the cloud. I want to tell you something. Church of God, arise. You and I need to start standing up and stepping out. Stop waiting on the Lord and start walking with the Lord. That's why he says, wherever your soul, wherever you put your foot down, that is yours. That what you put your foot on, I will bless, I will prosper. It is not going to be the same as it was in the past. I'm taking you to a new level. I'm taking you into a new thing. Start responding in a new way. Don't think from your past. Start stepping to a new level. That is what prophetically God said to us already in the beginning of this year, as well as in November last year. There's a new level God's taken us the church, as a church to a new level. New things for us to walk in. If we have to walk in new things, we need to think in a new way. We can't walk in the old ways. Verse 9, I repeat, have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. Do you think people are afraid and dismayed at the moment? Yes. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God says, listen, man, wherever you go, whatever you do, I'm with you. A lot of us are doing things by calculated things. By what we are familiar with. Don't become familiar with your past experiences. Because God wants to give you new encounters. New experiences. To walk in the new things. Verse 10. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people saying. Pass through the camp. And command the people saying. Prepare provisions. For yourself. So within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. <coughs> Prepare provisions. Hello. What you have? Provisions. Prepare provisions. What you have? 
is what he wants to multiply. Jesus blessed the fish, the bread, and he put it in his disciples' hands. When he put it in their hands, what they did with it, there was multiplication. I believe the church is moving into the season to cross over and there will be new opportunities, new resourcing, whatever. Just to give you an idea, I was speaking recently to uh, a very successful business person and um, they were making a comment just generally what's happening. Um, where they say the poorer get poorer and the wealthy become wealthier and where the billionaires are becoming multi-billionaires and where the millionaires are becoming multi-millionaires, etc., etc. And where basically all they were saying is this. The time to actually do things now, when everything is flat, is the greatest opportunities. The greatest opportunities. When the darkness is dark, I want to tell you, when you just light one match, you bring about change. Yeah. I don't know if you realize what I'm saying. We had a midnight hour where we can absolutely turn things into the great opportunities or we can agree with what everyone else in the world is saying. And this is the thing where God wants to open our eyes to actually see. Because you see, a lot of us got comfortable in the way we did things in the past. Your work might have been, your occupation, vocation might have been very comfortable. But there's new creative things that God is right now doing on earth. And I promise you, He's going to first want to reveal it to the church. He wants to first reveal it to His children. He wants to first give the opportunity to His children. Hello, I don't know if you hear what I'm saying. I'm a father. And I would want to, in my own family, I would want to see, you know, this my daughter. I, I want to see you prosper, my girl. I want to see the goodness upon your life. I want to see things open for you. Surely, I'm an earthly father. How much more a heavenly father? The factor that's keeping us back as the church is the giants that are now in the land called fear, economic fear. What if, what if? I want to tell you the greatest opportunities are now. The greatest opportunities. Um, I hear there's certain places that like um, uh, uh, there was businesses I heard down in the Cape, for instance, South Africa. There's pretty much you can get in restaurants now. You can get the furniture in there for pretty much almost zero because they're just closing down. Guys, what I want to tell you, that it's, I, I feel sorry for a lot of places, but I want to say again for the church, God wants to give opportunities. Because there's a land that He wants us to possess. There's things He wants us to expand into. Alright? But it's up to what you and I choose to step into. Do we, wherever we put our feet, are we, God says He wants to prosper us, but are we going to take a next step as well? And that's where we're at. So, uh, uh, He says here in verse 10, He says, The Lord your God is giving you uh, to possess. There's a possession, there's an inheritance He's giving us. And I really believe that, that right now on earth, God wants to open our, our, our eyes to actually see things right now. I believe there's, 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 there's going to be opportunities that open up. There's going to be new ideas. There's going to be, there's going to be things. Well, you, you, you know, the sad thing is many times in distress, we are forced to change. And people don't like change. But there's new creative ideas. And I say again, we need to partner with heaven and see what heaven is supplying, not what earth has supplied. Because there's too much fear surrounding us right now. But we need to see that there's even is actually backing us now. Um, there's, there's a video clip recently, I think that Kansas posted as well, about from Sean Bolt that speaks about the angel of breakthrough. And I really believe that, that there's, there's, there's angels being released. For breakthroughs for you and me. Amen. And we need to agree with what heaven is saying. Because what we start to declare and to speak is what we're going to see. Alright? Just like the weather patterns change the seasons. It's the same as the words we pray and declare changes our seasons. So when we speak hope, 
when we speak life, we're going to create a future for ourselves. What we meditate upon is what we become. That's why Joshua had to meditate on the word of the Lord. Because the word transforms you and it gives you a hope and a future. If you don't have hope and, and, and faith now to access things, you don't have a future. So as the church, we need to create a future. We need to create an economic future. We need to create a future where souls are going to get saved in this time. And by the way, they're getting saved. People are busy getting saved right now. I mean, I've heard some amazing things recently, or literally today actually. I've heard in our townships from a pastor today that they've got, a, a, a pastor will put up speakers at his house, right? Because they're not allowed to gather. And they're busy preaching the gospel in the townships. And people are busy getting saved. Awesome. All right. I, I heard from a friend in Austria yesterday afternoon or evening. They were telling me they just went to the, 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 the shop because they were in lockdown. They've just started to open now um, in Austria. They went to the, one of the shops and they were speaking. Now, this is in Austria. They're speaking to a cashier. And the woman says to my friend who's a pastor, they says, um, listen, but oh, you're not a pastor. Now, he still doesn't know where he, she gets that from. And says, but can, and he says, yes. So she says, but can I come to your church? This is in Europe. Hallelujah. Awesome. Revival. That's what it means, by the way, for you South Africans. So I want to tell you, the Spirit of God is moving all over. And you and I can hide in the caves like a lot of Christians are doing. Let's just bunker down. Let's just wait till the storm passes. I want to tell you something. You and I have been given authority to speak to the storm. Yes. yes. All right? The storm in your life. The storm wherever. And start saying what heaven is saying. Start seeing what heaven is showing us. All right? So opportunities coming to you, start acting on them because God is backing you. All right? New creative ideas. New things that God is opening up for you. Step into it because wherever your soul goes, wherever you put your foot, that is where you've walked in by faith. And where you walk in by faith is where God will prosper you. All right? So we cannot respond and be reactive to the world. We've got to respond to what heaven is saying. We've got to respond to what the Father is saying. Jesus never responded or reacted to circumstances. He only did what he saw his Father doing. He only said what he saw, heard his Father say. Let us be like Jesus. Church of God, let us arise. Even tonight, I, I trust that there's new hope that is rising up in your heart. And I didn't determine to speak so long, but I really believe this is a word for now for the yes. church, all right? So we're going to just worship a bit. We might go over it about three or four minutes past seven. But I just feel let's just worship a bit. Candice has got some songs. So if you want to stand or sit, if you don't know the songs, you didn't do know the songs, doesn't matter. So let's just welcome Holy Spirit. So thank you. Welcome Holy Spirit. Welcome you. Welcome Him in our midst. Lord, we're not going to allow fear to determine our future. Lord, You say You want to prosper us. You have a hopeful future for us. You've given us new territory. Lord, we don't want to remain in the place of old familiarity. Yeah. The way You did things in yesterday is not the way You want to do things in the future. Let us not be familiar with the ways of the past, but let us be creative with the opportunities You've given us. You say in crossover. For I have things I want you to walk in. Lord, I pray that you would open our eyes right now. Yes, Lord. Everyone is listening. Wherever they are, that our spiritual eyes will open up. That we will see how to reconfigure things. Yes. Whether even in dreams and visions you give us new ideas. Lord, but that we would know that we step out and we walk by faith, not by yes. sight. Yes, yes. That we walk by faith not by sight. Wherever you put your, the sole of your foot, I've given it. It is not what we're waiting on you, Lord, for. It's what you're saying we need to walk in. This is an action. Step in to the promises of God. Step in to your inheritance. Thank you, Lord, for the breakthroughs. I pray for people that need the financial breakthroughs. I pray for the business uh, people, uh, what they're busy with. I pray for the people, the students, Lord. I pray for supernatural downloads. Lord, if, if someone can get a, 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 a new program, a new computer, 
dialect, whatever, if whatever, like we've seen with these other guys, Lord, that heaven will download into our media people. If people will download business ideas. People will download things that we're not even familiar with. Lord, because you're the creator, we pray for creative ideas. We pray for opportunities. Lord, I want to pray for people right now that there will be new opportunities. I want to prophesy that will come upon them. New opportunities to create wealth. New opportunities to be able to access the things of heaven. To be able to access just new encounters to experience the things of God in a new way. That we'll step into this new higher level, Father. In the darkest times we've seen right now, Lord, the church, may the church of God arise in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus.
us, Lord.
promise also for the nations, Lord. Yes, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
ABC Angels on assignment According to your word, Lord Yes, Lord Those that are for us Are more than those against us Yes, yes Those that are for us Are more than those that are against us We walk in, Lord, your promises. Yes. We step into your promise, Lord. We step into your promise for our lives. We step into the destinies that lie in front of us. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, we will not remain behind. No. We gather our possessions and we take it and we pick it up and we step and we walk over into the promises. Because our inheritance lies that side of Jordan. Yes. And Father, I pray for everyone that is crossing right now. That we'll walk by faith and not by sight. That our circumstances and our walk will not be determined by the fears of what we hear and we see in the natural. But that we'll be transformed by the renewing of our minds according to what you said to us through your word. That we take possession of our inheritance even in this night in Jesus' name. That as a family, as a body, we step over in the promises right now. We choose to see what heaven reveals, what heaven supplies. Lord, open our eyes to see the opportunity yes, Lord. Yes. that you've given us. That the giants will fall because we'll exercise what you've given us. The authority and the power in Jesus' name. Yes, and we'll take our inheritance no matter the giants. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for every problem that lies in front of us. We step out and we walk in yes. to the promises of God. Give us new eyes of our heart to see. Give us new ears that we hear from heaven, not the circumstances. In Jesus' name. This coronavirus as well, we shut down. And the effect of that will be turned around in Jesus' name. Lord, we speak this out. No matter what He said, no matter what we see. Because if there's a dead person, you even said, Jesus, let me wait two days longer before I go and see Lazarus. And Lord, no matter whatever the time is, you work yes. out from outside of heaven. And you know the perfect time. And Lord, we want to walk in time with heaven, not with this earth. We want to hear the heaven's heart for the circumstances on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name. Lord, I just pray for every person out there now. I just bless them. I bless our friends and family across the waters, up in Europe. In the USA, I bless this, our family and friends up in Africa, even in Asia and South America and Australia. Lord, I just bless the family of God. Lord, that we'd arise and that we'd shine, that we'd step out in our inheritance because you have a rich inheritance for us, the sons and daughters of the Most High. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Amen. Family of God, we bless you. We love you. And let's run this race. Let's finish it strong. Let's finish it strong. Amen. We love you lots. God bless you. Be a blessing wherever you are. May you encounter God in a new fresh way. May you see in a new fresh way. In Jesus name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. We love you. Bye bye.